friends, thanks for joining me today. Today I want to show you in the beginning of this video what we're going to work on during the craft along session of the video. In our previous video we worked on our stencils and I will make sure I attach that video to the description box. And then in today's video we're going to work on our fabric flips. So we've got fabric here and then we have our paper. And what I did is I alternated uh, colors of paper. I tore them to give a, a nice uh, textural sort of imperfect edge. And then of course added this fabric flip. What I did is I made the little paper pads with the fabric flip and I, I sewed it on my sewing machine and then I adhered it to the book with glue. So that's one of the projects. Uh, we do a couple of those and then something else that we worked on in the journal was putting in some pockets and you can see that I em embellished this pocket with some buttons. Uh, we also added some fabric tabs to the sides of the paper. Here's another page that we stenciled on. We did that in the previous video. Like I said, I'll link that for you. We added a few belly bands here and there throughout the journal. So you can see this is a belly band right here. I added some ephemera that I had along with a little tiny piece of fabric and a button. Over here we've got an upper pocket and I added fabric on top of that with a cluster that I received from Billy at Craft and Cake with Billy. Here's another one of our little paper pads and I simply added some satin ribbon. Here's a different thing. I had received a banner in a, uh, it was a, a set of die cuts by Bow Bunny and this was a banner, but I decided I would go ahead and use that to hold a little tag in the journal. I simply embellished it with some fabric and a button. I put a tab down here to keep this securely in the journal. So friends, those are some of the things we are going to work on today. Here's more. But let's go ahead and get into the video. Let's craft together. Grab some paper, some glue, your scissors, some fabric. Uh, you do not have to make these little paper uh, flips with a sewing machine. You can do it all with glue or even tape. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's get started. I recently picked up this fabric from the thrift store and actually it was uh, I think a four pack of napkins and it's double sided. So there's a pattern on one side and a different pattern on the other side, but they coordinate very well together. So actually, um, if you like this, I'm going to go ahead and list two of the pieces into my Etsy shop because I absolutely, I love it. It's beautiful, very easy to work with. It's cotton, uh, easy to tear, and it's just a nice summery color. So at any rate, I'm going to use that throughout the journal and I'm also going to use it on the spine of the journal. The first thing I want to work on today are making some small paper pads. And I decided I'm going to go ahead and tear the pages so that they'll have a slightly rough edge. I like that for the texture that it creates. And I also like it because it's not perfect. And in some of my journals, I like to have that feeling of imperfection, of authenticity. You can see that I am using the edge of my paper cutter to tear the paper. That way it keeps it straight, but it's still a rough edge. I went ahead and I took the little paper pad and my piece of fabric over to my sewing machine and I sewed them together, but I will adhere them into the journal using some glue and I use Aileen's Tacky Glue and that seems to work great for me. While we are gluing this little paper pad into the journal, I want to thank each one of you for being here and spending some time with me. And I hope that you will enjoy crafting along with me 
or even if you're just hanging out with me and you're cleaning up your crafty space, whatever it is that you're doing, I just appreciate the time that you're spending here. I think this is such a pretty page and I want to find the perfect card to use to make a pocket for this page. And I think I have found it. Yeah, I think the colors in this card look great. So I'm just going to glue on two sides of it and we are going to pop that on there and that is going to be a very simple, quick, easy pocket. Frequently, I like to put things together in phases and stages, and so even though I'm putting these pockets in now, I will definitely be going back to embellish them. So uh, don't worry if you think, wow, that's a pocket, but it sure is plain. Uh, it will not stay that way, I promise you that. Sometimes I embellish right away and then sometimes I go back to embellish. It just depends on what I've got on my desk and actually sometimes I just feel really inspired to do my embellishing immediately <laughs> and then other times I don't. But I happen to have a just about perfect size piece of fabric here and we're going to go ahead and put that on this pocket now. Uh, that won't be the only embellishment that's going to end up going on the pocket but this is a great starter for it. I end up using this fabric throughout the entire journal and like I mentioned earlier in the video um, it was a napkin a cloth napkin and it came with two different sides but the patterns coordinate really nicely so I didn't even grab any other fabric to use because these end up just working perfectly in here before I got started on putting in the pockets and all of this good stuff that we're working on, I had grabbed a few pieces of ephemera that I had, things that were in the proper color palette. And this piece right here I got from Billy, Craft and Cake with Billy, and I think it's a perfect addition to this particular pocket. This journal has been such a joy to make. You know, if you guys know me, you know that I definitely don't stick with one genre or one color palette or anything like that. I can go from a very subdued journal to something vibrant and youthful and fun like this. And it's, it's quite stimulating for me artistically to do that. And I love doing that. So like I said, this has just been such a joy to work with and it's a custom order. And I was just thrilled um, when this customer reached out to me and asked me if I could do this. So it's a lot of fun. I'll be making another journal for her as well. And hers is going to be completely different and it's going to have a seaside theme. And I'm equally as excited about that as well. So you can see here, I've got the bow bunny on my table and this packet of bow bunny was given to me by my friend Stephanie at coffee paper scissors and you can see that I'm using a banner as uh, a, a tag holder and I think it's fantastic you know um, I I wasn't I knew I wasn't gonna use the banner like you would use a banner in this particular journal so I thought you know why not use it for something other than what it was created for and I think it's gonna work out just great and then here we have a nice little tag that we are turning into a pocket and I do believe that that tag was given to me by my friend Soleil at Soleil and Craft most of you know this, but in case you're new here and you are looking at my work and you are wondering what on earth I'm doing using clothespins, well, I'm going to tell you why I use clothespins. They have an incredible reach. So sometimes I'll use a bull nose clip or something like that, but they don't have the same reach that a clothespin has. And so that's why I use them. They have a great reach. They are very inexpensive. Uh, you can get a ton of them for next to nothing. And I just like them so I have a I have an affinity for clothespins so that's why you see me using them and they hold the things that I'm gluing in place quite well as you can see I did put a fabric page in this journal and actually it ends up being a double pocket so on this side it's just a, a plain side so we're gonna go ahead and put a paper pad 
uh, with a fabric topper on it on this side. Now this little scrap of of fabric right here that was given to me by my friend Pam of Pamela's creations it is actually flamingo fabric and I love it and it it goes quite well with this other fabric so we're going to go ahead and use that just for something a little bit different and you can see at the top of this page there's like this yellow well I popped that in the pocket to keep the glue from seeping through the fabric and then kind of gluing itself closed so that's what that it's not paper it was actually like a curious george book cover that i had stuffed in there it was the back of it so on the opposite side of our fabric um, pocket we're going to make another paper pad and i am going to use some plain yellow paper uh, yellow is the favorite color of the recipient of this journal and I always keep a stash of colored paper because you never know when you're gonna use it for something and so here it is coming in quite handy as I mentioned in the beginning of the video I sewed all of my little paper pads together but you don't have to do that if you don't have a sewing machine that is not a problem you can just glue the layers together or you can even use double stick tape We're gonna go ahead and create a pocket on this page and what you see me holding in my hand is an interesting little thing that I made. So I had some photo paper and I was printing something out for my daughter, but I printed it out on the wrong side of the paper. So the ink never dried. So I ended up, uh, what did I do? I was, I don't know, I was trying to like do something and I smeared the ink, right? So I was like, ah, oh, geez. But I didn't wanna throw it away. So I went ahead and I got my, um, what do we call it? That stuff that, uh, not Mod Podge, but um, you know, it's the stuff that it helps adhere two things together, but it's not glue. <laughs> it makes it uh, porous so that you can add another layer. Oh my gosh, it's gonna drive me crazy. Okay, if you know what I'm talking about, you need to put it in the comments for me. Um, it'll come to me eventually, but I just can't think of it right now. It's gonna make me crazy. But anyway, that's what I put over top of it. And I saved it, and I've had this for about three months, and I thought, oh, the colors are perfect for this. So I'll just go ahead and cut it in half and make a pocket out of it, which you can see that I did here. And I added a layer of velvety blue to it and then put a flower on top. And then I have another one of those banner pieces from the Bow Bunny kit. So I end up just putting, you know, making a, a little cluster on top. And now we have a spot to put a tag. So when I'm working on a book like this, uh, just pretty much altering a book, turning it into a journal, I try not to cover all of the illustrations because they're adorable and, and after all that's you know why we're using the book in the first place. So I was trying to think of creative ways to add writing space without covering all of the pictures. So I, what I did in this journal here and there throughout the journal was I made these little scrappy pads. And so for example, this one is a small scrappy pad, but it's four pieces of 
you know, paper. And I thought, that's great. It actually gives quite a bit of journaling space, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. And we're gonna dress it up with a little piece of fabric. And I just, I think it's cute and I think it works well. And I hope that's something that I can remember for future altered books and journals. On the opposite page, I'm going to go ahead and put an upper tuck spot, and that way we'll put a small tag in it. And I believe that I got this card, which I've now cut in half, but I believe I got that from my friend Soleil at Soleil and Craft as well. She had sent me a beautiful box that she made and she filled it full of beautiful goodies. And I've been hoarding it, I have to admit, but I decided that I am going to use some of the things that she made. And, um, and so I'm keeping with my promise in using those items. Usually when the illustrations on the bottom of the page and the words are at the top, I'll end up putting the, the little uh, tuck spot at the top and then obviously vice versa. So I am creating another tag tuck spot with, um, this was actually some scrap paper that I had and I just rounded the corners on it. It's a little bit big, so I'm gonna take the end off. It'll fit the page a little bit better by doing that. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of fabric to that. I'm sorry that I have moved my book off camera, but I just needed a little bit of workspace here. <laughs> is a piece of paper that I made and I tore it. Um, I think I tore it when I was, you know, I handle them when they're wet. I handle them uh, quite a bit actually. And so I, inev I inevitably end up tearing some of the pages or, you know, some of the corners off of the pages or whatever. But uh, have no fear because we're going to use this piece of fabric and we are going to glue this fabric to this paper. And that is not only going to repair it, but suddenly it becomes decorative. So we have added some interest to the page while repairing the page. Most of you know that I use Fabri-Tac when I'm working with fabric, uh, but I wanted to let you know that the same company has a similar product and it is called 3-in-1 and you can easily use that as well. It uh, basically holds anything together. It's, it's really fantastic. And one time I found the 3-in-1 at a lesser price than the actual Fabri-Tac and being that I feel like it's it's maybe even the same exact glue, although I can't say that for sure. Uh, I went ahead and I bought it because it was less and I used it and it was fantastic. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there because if you end up seeing both of them and one costs less, 
I just wanted to let you know that they both work equally well with fabric. Sometimes when I have a little time on my hands, I go through my scrap folder. I keep my scraps color coded. And so sometimes I will go through my scrap folder and pull out the larger sizes and I will turn them into tags. I'll just cut them to size, round the corners, yeah, and, and then they'll just be kind of sitting and waiting for a job to do for me. And this is one of them, but instead of turning it into a tag, I'm turning it into a pocket. So I just took a little bit more of the size off of it, and it's fitting perfectly here for a pocket. I'm going to add some fabric to it, and then we'll further embellish it later. But I just wanted to mention that because I have found doing that to end up being quite handy later on when I do want to make a pocket, uh, I can just kind of go through my, well, scraps that I turned into tags. I just grab those out of a pile that I have and voila. So it makes the process go a little bit more quickly. Now, when I'm working with a paper pad, I just use my off cuts from my paper pad to make my pockets. But obviously I'm not using any paper pad or even a digital kit for this little altered book journal. So that's why the tags are coming in so handy to use them as pockets. I had a day about a year ago when I was making belly bands and this is one of the ones that I made and I absolutely love it. I took some ribbon and I ruffled it on there, sewed it with my sewing machine and added the tags and I think it's so adorable and actually I should have said tickets and it goes perfect because you know you need to buy a ticket to get into the circus so i pulled that out of my belly band stash and i'm so happy to be able to use it in this journal now you can see that i ended up using my belly band on the edge um, sometimes well most of the times i end up putting my belly band in the center of the page but i didn't really want to cover up the illustration and I know that, you know, when I stuff it full of paper or whatever, it's going to cover it. But once you move your paper or your tag or whatever we stuff in there, then you can see the illustration. Now on the opposite side, I'm going to take a belly band. Also, this one I made about a year ago as well. And I'm going to put that one in the middle because I, I don't love these illustrations as much. So, you know, I, I kind of... <laughs> base my decisions on how much I like the illustrations and how much I want to cover and how much I want to keep uh, exposed. is another belly band that I made and I made it on the same day that I made the other ones I, I think I sat down just one day and worked on belly bands for you know an hour or so at any rate I had been saving this one for a particular sort of journal that I want to make but I I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get around to it and the colors of this go very nicely with the images in this book so I'm just gonna go ahead and use it and no sense in hanging on to it. So I can always make another one. I think I still have some of that fabric in my stash. So we're gonna go ahead and use it on here. I'm gonna put this one on the edge as well. One of my favorite things that is in this journal is this vintage music paper. This music paper is almost 100 years old. It was um, printed in 1937 and I, I'm just in love with it. 
and it already was naturally yellowed. I didn't have to coffee dye it or anything. I did add some gold gilding paste to the edges, which I think just enhances it. It's, I think it just looks lovely. But at any rate, I am gonna go ahead and add a paper pad to this vintage music paper. Now, I will tell you that if you watched my other videos, you'll know that the, the vintage music paper was very uh, fragile. And I went ahead and Mod Podged it, which gives it some strength back. It, it gives it a coating that holds it together. Plus it makes it feel really neat. So I went ahead and did that and that way it will last uh, for much longer and and here we are we're just adding a nice little paper pad to it my friend Stephanie at coffee paper scissors gave me these yoga cards and they are a stitch they are so very funny and the colors are perfect for in this journal so I'm gonna go ahead and use one to create an upper pocket. While I'm gluing in some tags, I just wanna say that I hope you guys are all doing well and good. Things are still a little bit wild and crazy over here in my neck of the woods. It seems like it's just been a very, very busy time. You guys know that we went on two trips, like one right after the other. And, you know, I mean, that, that in and of itself creates some chaos. And then when we got home, um, we're going we're gonna to have a celebration for Carl. Uh, he retired. He officially retired from his job, which is amazing. And so I'm deep cleaning my house because we're going to do the party here. We could have gone out, but, you know, going out is not as intimate. And you don't really get to talk to people unless you're sitting right next to them or across from them. So I thought it's going to be a lot of work for me to prepare my home. But it, it, it'll just, in the end, I think it'll be better, a more quality uh, time together um, with family. So I am deep, deep cleaning my house, and it is taking a lot of time, but I'm completely overhauling my dining room. And that's what I've been doing for the past several days. So life just still feels very busy to me mentally, uh, obviously physically as well, because I'm just, you know, working on moving furniture around and doing all that kind of stuff. But it's all good. I can't complain. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I feel like I've been uber, uber, uber busy. And it'll be nice to get to a place where I don't feel quite so hurried all the time. Uh, and I know that a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Friends, I appreciate you spending time with me today. I want you to know how much I value that. I know that there are a lot of places here on YouTube and on Instagram and on TikTok and on Facebook and everywhere else that you can spend your time. So just know that I value the time that you spend with me. Thanks for watching. See you soon.